Today, I want to talk about meta-learning and multitasking. I want to introduce meta-learning and multitasking, which according to this paper published in 2019, is the method that's used in YouTube video recommendation. Therefore, it's something serious. If you want to know more, keep watching. We learned what's AI and write a simple face classifier. In this video, we're going to go through more advanced topic and the topic that has gained popularity in the last two years is meta-learning. The motivation behind meta-learning is to improve one of the main drawbacks of current ML algorithm, which is huge hunger for data. And generalizing to new unseen tasks, let me make it more clear. As you know, the data sets which we can do something useful with are huge, like ImageNet that has around, as we said earlier, has around 1.2 or 1.3 million images. But what if we don't have a large data set? And another way to put that is, what if we want to quickly learn something? A special case of meta-learning is multitasking, uh, which is not something weird. We want to learn multitask, but by just using one neural network. So why it can be such a good idea? By using one neural network for several tasks, we are sharing parameters and therefore sharing data. So it can be much more data efficient. In this paper, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video, YouTube has some input like the video you're watching right now and the user features like age and your name and so on. And the follow is like that. Let's generate some candidate videos and rank them through a multitask network. And the network predicts something like user engagement, like clicking and the time spent and satisfaction like liking that video or, or rate that video in some way. So I think it's the best time if you want to show your satisfaction with this video, please hit the button like. Please. Mm, please. I don't want to go over all of the details of this paper, but by designing your network to do multiple but similar tasks, you can get something more data efficient. So that was the multitasking, but what about the bigger picture? Meta-learning. Um, multitasking doesn't care about generalizing to new unseen tasks, but meta-learning does. The fundamental question of meta-learning is how do we human can learn something really quick with just five to ten examples? And the answer that meta-learning proposes is maybe there is something in our mind that is really similar to this task but not exactly that. Something we call experience in our daily life. And currently we have a lot of wise and mature models like ImageNet and we can use the knowledge as our experience. So that's a cool idea. That's the key idea. We are able to learn fast if we have a rich experience. Therefore, bringing a new parameter called theta, which representing the experience of the model. Let's take a look at uh, this concept in a more mathematical way. Okay, for probabilistic view, you have to be familiar with maximum likelihood. For those of you who don't know or remember what it is, here is the main idea. Any distribution has some parameter and in real life they are unknown and sometimes impossible to exactly extract them. And neural networks are trying to extract parameters of a giant distribution with tons of parameters. but we can have a lot of observation. Let me make it concrete. Suppose you have an unfair coin. You want to decide the parameter p, which is the probability of a task being tail. How do you want to extract it? Well, if you think for a while and according to the definition of probability, you toss it a lot of time like a million and then say, hey, 400,000 was tails. So p equal or 0.4. This is maximum likelihood. You are setting parameters in a way that maximize the probability of your observation or in another word, this formula says that the 
best parameters are the parameters with the highest probability. So we wanted the probability of weights given your observation or your data set to be as much as possible. So you have to search over all of the parameters like W and which maximize this formula. Maximum likelihood is a general uh, method in statistics and is used in neural network as well. But in our special case in meta learning, we want to see how this applies to meta learning. So theta represents experience. We have to extract it in some way. In meta learning, it looks pretty same, but we instead of data set, we have theta and meta testing. For extracting data, there are a couple of ways which can be covered in another video. This video is for big picture of meta learning. Okay, we get familiar with the mathematical or probabilistic view of the meta learning model, but something that seems quite weird at first is sometimes it seems that we are training on test images. Let me put it that way. Uh, forget about train test validation splits and now we have meta training which I like to say experience data set and meta testing which is real life data set in my dictionary. Let me bring you a question. What is the goal of meta learning? I'll tell you. The goal of meta learning is if you're given a few examples of unseen classes you have to predict reasonably. By saying that training procedure is similar to that because in machine learning if your testing procedure is similar to your training procedure you're going to get better result and this is something that was confirmed by this paper. Okay, We use every label in our meta training because this is something that is related to past, that is related to our experience and we know everything in our experience. And what is important for us is how do we generalize on new unseen tasks. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, that was an introduction to meta learning. I hope you get a sense how we can learn from tiny data sets. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and see you next time.